In this video, we'll discuss a topic that's essential to every software developer, data structures. We use them every day, and they play a critical role in building efficient systems. So let's dive right in and take a closer look at some common examples. Let's start by discussing lists. Lists are a versatile and essential data structure in software development. They are great for storing and manipulating ordered data. They are useful in various applications like task management, social media feeds, and shopping carts. In a task management application, a list can be used to store and organize tasks for each user. Tasks can be added, removed, or reordered easily, and users can mark them as complete as needed. Lists are also useful in social media applications like Twitter, where they can store and display a user's feed in real time ensuring the latest content is shown in the correct order. Arrays are another fundamental data structure. They provide a fixed size order collection of elements. They are particularly well suited for situations where the size of the collection is known or doesn't change frequently. Arrays are commonly used in mathematical operations, storing large data sets, or when there is a need for random access to elements. For example, in a weather application, an array could be used to store temperature readings for a specific location over a defined period. This allows for easy calculations like averages and trends. Arrays are also widely used in image processing, where each pixel's color data can be represented in a two-dimensional array. It enables efficient manipulation and transformation of the image. Next, we have stacks. Stacks follow the last-in, first-out principle. They are perfect for supporting undo and redo operations in text editors or maintaining browsing history in web browsers. In a text editor, a stack can be used to store each change made to the text, making it simple to revert to a previous state when the user triggers an undo operation. Queues operate on a first-in, first-out basis. They are good for managing printer jobs, sending user actions in games, or handling messages in chat applications. In chat applications, a queue can be used to store incoming messages in the order they are received. It ensures that they are displayed to the recipient in the correct sequence. Heaps, on the other hand, are used for task scheduling and memory management. They are especially helpful in implementing priority queues, where we need to access the highest or lowest priority item efficiently. Trees organize data hierarchically. They are useful for representing data with natural hierarchies or relationships. They can be used in various applications like database indexing, AI decision-making, or file systems. In AI decision-making, trees like decision trees are used in machine learning for classification tasks. Trees are also used in database indexing, where they can help speed up search, insert, or delete operations. For example, B trees and B plus trees are commonly used in relational databases to efficiently manage and index large amounts of data. Hash tables allow for efficient data lookup, insertion, and deletion. They use a hash function to map keys to their corresponding storage locations. It enables constant time access to the store values. Hash tables are widely used in various applications, such as search engines, caching systems, and programming language interpreters or compilers. In search engines, Hash tables can be used to store and quickly retrieve index data based on keywords. This provides fast and relevant search results. Caching systems may use hash tables to store and manage cache data. It allows for rapid access to frequently requested resources and improves overall system performance. Another example is the implementation of symbol tables in programming language interpreters or compilers. Hash tables can be used to efficiently manage 
and lookup variables, functions, and other symbols defined in the source code. Suffix trees are specialized for searching strings in documents. This makes them perfect for text editors and search algorithms. In a search engine, a suffix tree can be used to efficiently locate all occurrences of a search term within a large corpus of text. Graphs are all about tracking relationships and finding paths. This makes them invaluable in social networks, recommendation engines, and pathfinding algorithms. In a social network, a graph can be used to represent the connections between users. It enables features like friend suggestions or analyzing network trends. All trees are good at finding nearest neighbors. They are crucial for mapping apps and geolocation services. In a mapping application, all trees can be used to store spatial data, such as points of interest. This enables efficient queries to find the nearest locations based on the user's current positions. Now let's discuss cache friendliness and how it relates to various data structures, including lists, arrays, and other mentioned earlier in the video. CPU cache is a small, fast memory between the main memory and the CPU. It stores recently accessed data and instructions, so the CPU can access them quickly without fetching them from the slower main memory. Now, different data structures have varying levels of cache friendliness based on how their elements are stored in memory. Contiguous memory storage, like that in arrays, allow for better cache locality and fewer cache misses, resulting in improved performance. When an array element is accessed, the cache can prefetch and store nearby elements, anticipating that they might be accessed soon. On the other hand, data structures with non-contiguous memory storage, like linked lists, can experience more cache misses and reduce performance. In a linked list, elements are stored in nodes scattered throughout the memory, and each node contains a pointer to the next node in the sequence. This makes it difficult for the CPU to predict and load the next node before it's needed. The other data structures, such as trees, hash tables, and graphs, also have varying degrees of cache friendliness based on the implementation and use case. Now, this disparity in access times can lead to performance issues in modern computing, particularly in situations where cache misses occur frequently. We should be mindful of this when working with performance-critical applications and choose the appropriate data structure based on the specific requirements and constraints of the projects. And there you have it. These are just some of the many data structures we use every day as software developers. Understanding and mastering these data structures will help us build more efficient systems, making us better at our craft. If you like our videos, you may like our system design newsletter as well. It covers topics and trends in large-scale system design, trusted by 300,000 readers. Subscribe at blog.bybygo.com.